Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. There are some ladies in the room I'm pleased to see, though I'm afraid still the glass ceiling not entirely breached in this sector of British industry and world industry. Um, a very great pleasure to welcome, here to the, welcome you here to this Global Business Summit on Advanced Engineering Excellence and also, of course, to welcome you to uh, Lancaster House, which um, in its own restrained way is almost as splendid as the Olympic Stadium at the other end of, of town. This is the uh, house um, which Queen Victoria is said to have visited in the 1840s, just popping across the road from Buckingham Palace there. Uh, and she said to the Duchess of Sutherland, who was then uh, the woman in charge of Lancaster House, I have come from my house to your palace. And you can see why she said that. It is indeed thoroughly palatial. Um, my name's Nick Hyam. I'm your uh, chairman for the morning. Um, and uh, a personal welcome from me. Um, Forgive me for a moment if I sound ever so slightly jingoistic. Um, we Britons are feeling jolly pleased with ourselves at the moment. Um, this is a great moment to be celebrating British achievement, and not just in Olympic sport. I, I cannot personally remember a time in recent years when Britain and Britons have felt so good about themselves and about their country. Um, there were doom-mongers, many of them, I'm sorry to say, in the media where I myself work, who said that the Olympics would not be a success. Well, um, those of us who suggested that have been proved comprehensively wrong. Um, and the Olympics have reminded us all what a combination of dedication, talent, hard work, flair can produce. And the opening ceremony, um, which was, in my judgment, both bonkers and brilliant, summed up, I think, a peculiarly British take on the world, a particularly British sense of humour. So, this fortnight here at Lancaster House has been a very opportune uh, chance to throw a, a, a light on a number of other areas of British achievement, areas in which the UK is also a world-class contender, not just in the business of getting Olympic medals. And today, we're going to concentrate on advanced engineering. And I suppose the Olympic motto, which you'll know is faster, higher, and stronger, might be an appropriate one for today's conference, because among our speakers today, we have leaders from the worlds of Formula One, that's the faster bit, aerospace, that's the higher bit, um, automotive, um, that's probably also the faster bit, and construction equipment, which is obviously the stronger bit, all areas in which the, the uh, UK can boast um, companies which are world leaders. We've got chief executives and chief engineers here today. We've got captains of industry, finance, politics, and we're going to look at uh, a whole series of questions. What brings so much engineering talent to the, U to the UK? Um, how best can, how can best practice in advanced engineering be shared around the world, those things that we've developed here in the UK? Um, how can we deliver standards of excellence right along the supply chain? Um, and what are some of the latest innovations which are reshaping uh, the automotive and the aerospace industries in particular? Uh, before I introduce our first speaker, who to the Brits among you will actually need no introduction. I have a few housekeeping announcements. Please, if you've not already done so, switch all electronic devices to silent. Yes, yes, you're checking to make sure. If a fire alarm sounds, it says here, please follow the instructions of the staff. Um, I am captured forever on a BBC training video. I was chairing an in-house event at the BBC once, which unfortunately for me, was being filmed and recorded when the fire alarm went off. And as chairman, I said, I wonder if that's a false alarm. Let's just carry on until someone tells us. <laughs> this, I can tell you, is absolutely not what you do when the fire alarm goes off. You move in a, an orderly f way to the exits. Um, please be aware that today's, today's events are being recorded, as I was on that previous occasion, um, and some of them may be being broadcast live to other venues uh, around town, and that's um, why we have the cameras here. Um, and if you have a chance to walk around the house, as I hope you already have done, look out for the way in which it has been transformed into uh, a showcase, um, particularly for some of the creative and innovative excellence uh, that we boast here in the UK. You'll have noticed uh, on your way in at the bottom of the, the stairs 
um, a Formula One racing car, but there's also an enormous amount of art and design behind you. Uh, you will see um, a, a spectacular, um, I, I think it's probably a tapestry by Grayson Perry. Uh, we've also got artworks by Damien Hurst and Bridget Riley. We've got furniture, lighting, crafts, and accessories provided by some of the UK's leading designers, including Thomas Heatherwick, who designed that spectacular Olympic cauldron, which featured in the Olympic opening ceremony, um, and War Thistleton, who designed that um, very attractive pavilion leading to the garden where I expect um, many of you had breakfast. It's a great shame that that's only temporary because it seems to me to be a, a, a very pleasing enhancement to uh, Lancaster House. And please um, do use your Samsung tablets to find out more about the products on display. We have a great deal to get through, so without further ado, let me introduce our opening speaker. He is the Deputy Prime Minister, Nick Clegg. <laughs> 